of students in it. Yeah. Starting from the MC, they are well articulated. And it's English roaming around. <laughs> yeah. So, and then, uh, I, I don't know, I'm also pressurized. <laughs> Yeah. So MC put it that uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, student structure directive. Yes. So student structure directive is, is not really a topic, I'd say. It is a, a function or something that needs to happen. Yeah. So basically, it is something that conscientize or bring to remembrance to the student as to what is our angle? Yeah. So I remember this used to be done by Mr. Blanbury. Okay. Some of the recall, he was the one who was giving directive a lot of times. <coughs> so we thank God that he had taken a journey okay. of marriage and Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I have in my possession to recognize those who have led us quite well in the student ministry. Yes. And I know that uh, we are streaming this, perhaps they are watching and listening. Mm -hmm. I want to say Mr. Kuluago, who has really been uh, a good visionary for this ministry. And one in particular, Dwanda as well. And I would say, um, given Makagula as well. Uh, these are individuals that uh, carried us to where we are right now. As I'm listening to Tony give a testimony yes. about her journey with God on the student structure, yes. I think deeply in the depth of my heart the amount of work this gentleman I just quoted they've pulled to see such a testimony come to life today. Mm -hmm. Because when they started, it is the position of God that placed it in their hearts that they should initiate such a movement, yes. a movement where we translate, uh, you know, infants or children to semi-adults yeah. in school and particularly also take them to a position where they receive their salary while still saying God. Mm. So I, I recognize them and I say that uh, we should pray for their marriages as well because they let us well and we are where we are. Yes, and I can speak in front of you today mm -hmm. because they've given me platforms. Yeah. While <laughs> I was still shaking as well. So it just shows that uh, times times are moving. Okay. Because today I'm the one standing here in their position, I would say. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will also God will translate with him. <laughs> but uh, at this point in time, I'm still with you, Bazalai. So, leadership directive for Estonian student ministry is concerned. It is something very important, and it's not something that we started, or the brothers I quoted started. It's something that has always existed. Yes. It starts with what Jesus Christ puts to his apostles in his latter days on earth. He puts it to them in the book of Matthew 28. Verse 19. He gives them a great assignment yes. that we also are part of our induced in it, mm -hmm. which is go ye out there mm -hmm. and preach the gospel. Yeah. Then he does not end there in my surprise. Mm -hmm. Verse number 20 he says, and teach them. Yes. Because it's one thing to use a fear or fear factor and approach people and say they are going to hell. And they don't want to go to hell and they run and come join you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when they join you, it's not because they understand what you are doing. It's because they are afraid of hell. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about what my Moba I've had he spoke about today. Mm -hmm. Because he's teaching us who Christ is to yeah. us. Because if people are here because they are afraid of hell, then we are running in circles. Yeah. Because when we get in this position, we ought to have a relationship 
with Christ. And our problems, our troubles, don't end when we are out of them. Yeah. They end when we understand our position in Christ. Yes. So such teachings are very important. Mm. So I stand before all of you, and particularly to new students who are joining us in the field of higher institutional learning, to say, here we carry a vision in this movement. The word ministry, therefore, it's put to say service. You know we have a minister of police. It just means that he's a servant yes. in the policy. Yeah. So it means that they are offering a service in policy. And therefore, I call all of you students today proudly in confidence to say you yeah. are ministers. Yes. And the reason I say yes. that is because you offer a service of yeah. preaching the gospel. Yes. But then I'm conflicted into hearing ministers who say that my dress code will preach. Mm. Because when he left the assignment, he didn't say that uh, focus on maybe putting on spectacles and they will preach. No. We need to move from what we call the psychological. Yeah. Mm. We need to move from what we call what we can observe. Mm. No, the philosophical to psychological. Mm. Apologies. Philosophical theory says that sister knows you to go because we observe you. But that didn't preach nothing. Yes. Mm. Because preaching the gospel is about the renewal of mind. Yes. If I'm attracted to how you're dressed, it means nothing. If you speak well and well articulated, it means nothing. Why am I saying this? Because even Jesus Christ himself, even living his life that is so holy, preached nothing. Yeah. Why am I saying this? He's, the Bible says that he had multitudes that he yeah. preached to. But when he left, 120 were renewed. Yeah. He performed miracles, yes. He did. Mm. And people were saved. Mm. And people were healed. But I'm worried. Even those that he fed food to when they saw him bless the food multiply, mm. they saw the food multiply and they ate it. Yeah. And then when he left, 120 were renewed. Yeah. The Bible is a bit uh, patriarchal because it documents men. Mm. It talks about amount of men. He says the Bible says that he preached to four thousand men. And their wives, and women, and their children. So in my mind, I'm mind. I'm thinking if I'm with, if they're counting men, and particularly in the Jewish law, when they say a person is a man, and we're speaking of a person who's 20 years and above, it means that you qualify to can get married according to Jewish law. So therefore, when they pronounce the person is a man. Usually, we speak of a person with a wife. Mm. Because uh, for us to call you a man, you have to be tested by your wife and prove yourself to be a man. <laughs> and today, we have men that have proven not to be men when they were tested by their wives. Yeah. We see them run into court and get divorced. Mm. So, when the Bible documents that uh, there were 4,000 men and their wives and their children, whom Christ fed when he left, I'm surprised. Mm -hmm. Only 120 are the reason we are here today. Yes. 120 understood the message. Yes. 120 were renewed in mind. 120 promulgated the word. And 120 made it a possibility that I can say my brother mm -hmm. in Christ. Oh, because they understood the message. So when we say that we carry that same burden, we don't mean to go impress people on how you dress. 
Yeah. We mean open your mouth and tell them about Christ. Yes. Amen. Indeed, uh, we have gotten a lot of things out of context or rather out of the intention of God as to how they ought to happen. Mm. Yeah. And we have gotten to develop what we call a subjective theology. It's an idea of if God means this to me, God must mean that to you. Mm. I like what uh, Olin uh, yes. said to say yes. that uh, uh, if, if my memory serves me well, he quoted nobody to say if God speaks to you through dreams and visions, that doesn't mean he speaks to me. Yeah. But subjective theology has gotten us to say if God speaks to me in visions and dreams, he ought to speak to you in visions and dreams. Yes. And therefore, we are almost running uh, you know, a church of uh, candles where all the cows must walk this direction. And we let what we call uh, Pentecostals, those who are moved by the Spirit. Because when the Spirit says I'm taking a left direction, we are saying according to my God, it's the right direction. Then therefore we miss the act of God. And what do we teach therefore? So as we go back to the conscientizing in the student ministry, we say that uh, what our brothers have taught us, whom are married now, <laughs> and who have carried us through leadership, we ought to do the same. See, we're quite organized now. Mm. It's just unfortunate COVID got us to meet here. But our position, power, and authority is on campus. Because that's where we were supposed to translate yes. those what we call visitors. Mm. It is still our mandate, our burden, our weight, and our glory to do that. So therefore, because I'm in the absence of the authority or a position where we do that, quite well and i'm happy we met where we are and i want to just want to put this to you Bazalwane, to say we we are experiencing a battle and i want to start from personal space to ministry to say every human has got a battle on what we call spirituality and sensuality. Okay. In simple terms, spirit and senses. Okay. Sexuality is a word that extends what is senses. Senses, we know them. Touch, mm. eyes, looking, smelling, tasting, hearing. Mm. So, what is spiritual? It is what is connected to God through faith. Yes. And what is sensual is what is connected to the world through our senses. Yes. And as Christians and as saved people, we find ourselves battling between these two things. Oh. Spirituality and sexuality. Oh no, I don't feel like going to church. That comes to a point of senses. All right. When the Bible says that uh, the spirit is eager, but the flesh is weak, that's the battle that we've got. And that's the reason why we've gotten people zip their mouth and say that their dress code will, you know, <laughs> preach the gospel, especially ladies. You know, putting on your dukes, you think that. Uh, Funny, they even associate you to others, you know. So, it's very important that we understand spirituality and sexuality. Yeah. So, when a person is spiritual, we speak of people who walk by faith. Yes. And people who are sexual, we speak about people who walk by sight. Yes. And those who walk by sight understand what they see. 
And some of the time, you know, and, and we've gotten God in this condition where what we see or what we are in or circumstances and situation, if we don't go, see God in them, we almost want to question his existence. But he says that nobody can impress me without faith. Yes. Because no matter what your sight shows you, he still is God in heaven. And therefore, he's looking for you to search him through your faith. Because through faith, we connect to the spirit yes. of God. And therefore, can make sense of the essential what we see. So that battle still continues even today. So we are stuck in between what we believe and what we see. I believe in this. I believe God is going to take me out of this. But what I see, it's so big. I don't even think that God can lay a hand and take me out. But you know, you come on Sunday. You say, I believe in God. But when the test of believing in God comes and appears in your life, you look at what you see as mighty. And it almost becomes a servant of what you see. Why do you think 120 people were left? It's because nobody understood how to believe in what they don't see. It took Abraham to believe in not seeing to go as his guided. But when he saw, mm, it was something else. Yeah. And that's where we are caught up in. Our situations are so great, yeah. such that we question God when they come. Yeah. But funny part, uh, we always come out and say, it was God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was God. Yeah. So it means that no matter how big the situation is, God's position mustn't be questioned because he operates through you by faith. Mm. And that spirituality. We often ask, what is to be spiritual? Is to walk by faith. Mm. When they say that, uh, you know, the rain is coming and you ought to be there, when what we see is the rain coming heavily with a storm, and I might sit down. But those who walk by faith don't walk by conditions, but they walk by revelation. And how does the revelation come about? It is something that has been revealed to you. And when you believe it, you walk by it, no matter there is a storm coming. Because the storm is what you see in the sensual in the physical. But the revelation says there's a better place you are going. Yes. Yes. And when we walk by that faith, we see ourselves at the end of it. Yeah. And we like our God is boss. Hallelujah. And that is why the idea of God with humility is individual. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It means that it goes with an individual. Because when he reveals an assignment to you, yeah. you don't walk by what you meet as you go to fulfill the purpose. Mm. You go by what has been revealed. Oh, Jesus. And that is spirituality. Oh, Jesus. And when you have spirituality in order, we will say you are crazy. Because they will tell you it's 10 o'clock at night, but God said, oh, when he revealed it to you, yeah. That there's somebody by pump station who needs bread. Listen, God revealed this to you. But when I will tell you, you can't take bread at pump station by 10 o'clock. Because in the sexual, there are thieves on the road. But the revelation got an Abraham crazy on the road. When his family could have convinced him otherwise to stay at home. Yeah. But he has a revelation. Yes. And the revelation that he has to be at park station at 10 o'clock. Because there's somebody who's praying in his hand. Yes. And because when you walk by revelation, 
we defeat human understanding. Because human understanding says there's a lady you can't walk by a park station at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Because we have stories that are piled up at police station. Yeah. And what happens at 10 o'clock at park station? Hmm. But because you walk by revelation, yes. what has been revealed to you yes. is what has to get you crazy and get you on the road mm. to park station at 10 o'clock. And as you take the walk, I want you to walk confidently because he who appointed you will protect you. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. Unfortunately, yeah, Brother Howard, you won't protect me going to Park Station at 10. Yeah. You will say to me, I'm super crazy. Mm. But spirituality is the faith, believing in God as He reveals yes. your direction. Sister Chloe obviously did put to us, and I want to associate to her story. Yeah. I don't know if she walked by faith or by sight. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks to me that uh, she had a goal in mind. Yeah. Yeah. If she goes back home, nothing changes. If she goes on, something might work out. So it looks to me that she began in the end in mind. Always as she was thinking, there was an end in mind. Mm -hmm. And that is a goal. So as the student ministry, we've got an end in mind. That as we are seated here, we don't want to have testimonies of Claudio who was in the same of Great Leben, Epuma, Nongoma. We want stories of people who were saved at university. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we want. And that's the direction of this ministry. We want next time when we meet students, yes. somebody must come and say, mm. as I was hiking through the corridors of campus, I met, you know, somebody mm. who, when they spoke to me, not when I saw them. Mm. <laughs> when they spoke to me, I was never the same. Yeah. That's the direction of the student ministry. And I make a call to conscientize students that this is the direction we're taking. Maybe some of you are sleeping on what you carry for God. Maybe because you just believed what method is for you to achieve your degree and get your salary later. Mm. But let me tell you something. It matters not. As long as you don't have a network of people behind you mm. saved. Mm. See, when Christ started, he, he started profoundly by creating a network of 12 people. Jesus. And he taught them all that he wanted to teach them so that they can create their 12, 12, 12, 12. And from the 12, 12, 12, they taught them to create their 12, 12, 12, 12. 12. Yeah. Mm. Up until where we are today. Yes. Yeah. So what is your network? You just take a mind map and throw it. Man, how many people have you spoken to? I'm not saying that those who already did boost about it all. Rather, this is a competition to run for that. But it's our sign. Christ left it to us, all of us. It is our burden. And if you carry not this burden, I don't know what you're doing. Because it is important <clears throat> that we carry the bird yes. and we fulfill the assignment. Amen. Not only that, Amen. when you're done your assignment by preaching, you'll find Mantuba on the pulpit teaching these people how to have a relationship yes. with Christ. How amazing mm. it is. Mm. But first, open your mouth. Yeah. Say something. Mm. Be kind and say hello. Yeah. How are you? Mm -hmm. We know in the university, mm -hmm. when you approach those of opposite uh, gender, it might look like you're, look, you're looking to propose a special yes. guy. And yes, you're proposing Christ. Yeah. 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 Life is about proposal. Yeah. 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 It's 
some of you goes to interviews and the reason you think that you have passed your interview mm -hmm. is because you proposed yes and you convinced them yeah and that's why you receive your salary today yeah, yeah. it's all about pitch it's all about proposal mm -hmm. it's all about exchanging of words mm -hmm. the reason we're different from animals is that they've got no communication senses mm -hmm. but we can say hi <laughs> so surely we can open our mouth and say something but first we need to understand where our battle is if we now move by revelation I'm telling you we're going to open our mouth but if we move by we now I'm shy coming from a point of senses sensuality you are delaying and dragging the bus back. Yeah. Because we are looking to be fishers of men. Oh, right. And we are looking to build more of those to walk by revelation. <laughs> Indeed, God speaks. And as he reveals to you, mm. let that drive you. Mm. No matter what. Yeah. Let it be your drive. Yeah. Take that position. Let it be your drive. Mm. And you will see what you will achieve. Mm. If you move by revelation. Pastor Rani, let me put to you to say that uh, we are not responsible about where we are positioned. Mm -hmm. If you are born in a family that is disadvantaged, it's, it's not your responsibility. Yeah. You are not, you are not, yeah. it's not your fault. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your position is not your fault. Mm -hmm. Your position is the idea of God. Yes. Okay. Let us read uh, the book of Ecclesiastes. It's a book of wisdom. Uh, chapter number six, verse eleven, if I'm not mistaken. Ecclesiastes. Verse number 10, then, verse number 10. Chapter number 6, verse 10. Everything that happens was decided long ago. Yeah. We humans know what we are like, and we can't argue with God because He is too strong for us. The more we talk, the less sense we make. So, what good does it do to talk? Only 10. The, 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 the writer there is a, it's, it's a gentleman who writes from a point of observation. So he says a lot of things. So his sentences are very short as he gives his meaning. Chapter number six, at least, thank you very much. Verse number six, I mean, chapter number six, verse 10, it says that everything has already been decided. It was, it was known long ago what each person would be. So there is no use arguing with God about your destiny. I want to qualify this statement and this position in the mind of God to us. Everything has been decided. God well, quoted a verse that uh, he gave them something and he said, them, what is the verse again? He gave them what? And then he did what? Then he said to them, right? First thing you must understand, he called and positioned them. The point of departure, he called and positioned them. Yes. Then he made them get positions. So your position is not your duty. It's the duty of God. Yes. Who will make you possess? The minute he make you possess something, you carry a responsibility. Mm -hmm. So God indeed uh, set up the structure, student structure, and positioned to our disposal, and made us carry this all this knowledge to deliver to you. Then you carry some what we call possessions because you carry knowledge and information. Mm -hmm. But it makes me wonder when the responsibility comes to exchange the knowledge and the information. You stay in your room and lock yourself and eat your noodles and lucky like stuff. Yeah. <laughs> mm. 
He positioned you at university. <laughs> he gave you possessions, which is the will of God. Yeah. But your responsibility, you surrendered. He positioned you. Some of you are crying about fees, registration. He made it available for you. He made you read the word. He gave you all this knowledge, the wisdom. Some of you think that you are smarter than others. <laughs> but when the smartness has to be at work, we don't find you there. Yeah. No wonder Christ says that uh, the harvest is plentiful. Yes. But we are suffering workers. But today, we conscientize student ministry that you have the knowledge, you are positioned at the university at the disposal of millions and thousands of people, hmm. but your responsibility is to share the word. Yeah. But we find less people there. No wonder our numbers don't make sense. Yeah. No wonder we've got no new faces. No, no. Every single year, no new faces. Then you know what we do? We eat each other from within. Because what we know, we can only compete with it if we don't take it to where it's supposed to be. We argue about verses, who is right, who is wrong. We understand the context and who doesn't understand it. But the context belongs to those who knows not. The, or the context is not sound. The man was preaching, but it was not sound in the Sunday. Now, those are the things we talk about. Look how much we've degraded ourselves. Yeah. To the position where we disposition others from their glory and anointing by telling them that he missed the context of that phrase. <laughs> but the context belongs to those who knows not. Hmm. So Bazalani, student ministry, you are conscientized today to deliver. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.